virtual switches and habitat. Now why would you want to set these things up? Because they let you do stuff like this. Click a simple button for any automation you want and you can set a timer, you can whatever. This one here is just a really simple easy one but it takes the hydroponic solution I have underneath the deck in a big 4x4 tote, pumps it up, fills up a watering can and lets you use the other watering can to water the plants and you don't have to worry about this thing overfilling. It just, I know it's so trivial, but it's pretty sweet. Anyway, so uh, here's what you do to set these things up. It doesn't take a rocket scientist, clearly, because I did it myself. All right, so the first thing we're gonna need to do is head on over to devices inside of Hubitat and add a device. We wanna add a virtual device. And this is whatever automation you wanna call this or whatever you wanna set up, just something that you can remember it by. You can name it anything you want. So we'll call this one Test for YouTube. And we're gonna save that device after we uh, select what kind of virtual sensor we want it to be. It can be lock, it can be all kinds of different things, but uh, today we're just gonna do a virtual switch and I will put this on to outside just to show you how I kind of set up the example that I gave you. Once you've got that done, you should see your virtual switch set up and that's just it, save device. And then you wanna head over to apps. Go to rule machine and we wanna create a new rule and uh, this is the example fill watering can, so example, timer rule. And we're gonna continue that. And the trigger is going to be what turns this thing on and off. So I'm just gonna use that virtual switch to start the automation. So we call this switch something for YouTube, but I already don't remember. Uh, it's switch anyway. There we go, test for YouTube. I'm gonna update that. When the switch turns on, that's gonna start the event of whatever we want it to do. Done with the trigger. And done with trigger events. That's all we need to do to get this thing going. Now to create the automation that you see me have above there, we're going to begin by creating a new action. And uh, in this case, it's a conditional action. so. I put in an if expression then. And we want a new condition. So the first thing I'm gonna do is tell this thing uh, that if it's between two dates um, in the middle of winter, for example, I don't need this switch turning on and off. And I'm also dual purposing using the switch in other places. So I'm going to eliminate that. So between May, uh, I know we don't plan before May long. So let's say May 20th and the end date, I'm gonna say by October 15th, our garden is long out, and then I don't have to worry about it. And we're not using the block heater, which is the other place that this switch is being used. Done with that condition. And we also want a new condition for this. Which is the switch that we just created. Once that turns on, done with this condition, and done with the if expression, then we're gonna move on to the then. So if it's between those two dates and the test button that we're creating for YouTube here, when that turns on, it's going to run whatever actions that we put next. So we're gonna create an action, and this one here just controls a switch. And that switch, turn on and off. And now I can select any number of different switches or buttons that I would like it to click on and off. So in the case of this one, the big watering can or the big watering jug there is labeled block heater because that's what its winter purpose is. And we're gonna turn that on. Then to get this thing to run just the duration that I want, to fill that watering can, the first thing you're gonna have to do is you're gonna have to manually turn it on and you're manually gonna have to time it so you know exactly how long it takes. Once you have that, they can build that in here. In the case of this one, it took 
50 seconds for it to fill, so we're going to add a delay. And we're going to wait. Uh, delayed actions, that's the one. It took 50 seconds, so we're going to put a 50 in there. Hit enter, and we're done with that action. After it waits for 50 seconds, then all we just need to do is just turn that switch back off. So we control our switch and we set our switch of block heater. There it is. And we also want to make sure we turn the test switch off that we created that starts the event. Otherwise, it's just going to infinitely loop itself and done with the action. And then we end the if and that's it done with the actions. Now that you have it here, you're most likely going to want that button somewhere where it's more useful to use. So if you do want to add it to a dashboard, once you click on done, you go to apps, then on dashboard, and you'll click here and you'll see also see the test button for YouTube. Once we update that, we can go to our dashboard, go right to the bottom, Click on the plus, select our test button for YouTube, because it'll show up here now. Put the kind of switch it is, or the kind of device it is, it is a switch, or that's how we want it to behave, and add the tile. And you see the tile pop up in the bottom here. So now anytime we want to fill that watering can, all we would do is click this thing on, it'll run for its 50 seconds, and it'll turn off. A simple little easy automation, but if you've got these smart switches in your house anyway, you might as well put stuff like this in there. Those virtual switches just eliminate the need for the on-off, on-off. Switches can turn themselves off after any length of time or any duration, whatever you choose as a variable. If you uh, have a bedtime routine, you click a button, maybe it uh, locks all the doors, closes the garage door, locks your deadbolts, that kind of thing, turns off all the lights, all the automations, or all the other switches you have on in your house. It just saves you a little bit of running around. And once the switch is built once, you can use it for as long as you want and life becomes easier. Hopefully you guys found this video useful. And if you like more content like this, there's definitely always Hubitat stuff coming up on this channel. Uh, in the next little bit here, I did get a, a C8 elevation hub from Hubitat. I will be posting an update to that. It wasn't quite as rock solid as a C7, but I think that's changed. Anyway, if you want to see that video, I will leave it on the side here when that one is done. <laughs>